Okay, the tribe of Levi. Levi, of course, means uh, attach or join. Uh, I use attach a lot because we uh, continue, uh, we get attached to his word and to the things in his tabernacle. And of course, the order of birth is he's the third son of uh, Leah, and uh, you find it in Genesis 29, 34. And his date of birth uh, is the 16th of Nisan, 2195, which relates to us as the 2nd of April, April 1566 BCE. So, anyway, it's long before our time. So, anyway, he is mentioned <coughs> very prominently with, uh, of course, Simeon uh, taking part in avenging his sister uh, Dina's rape at Shechem. Uh -huh. And it finds in Genesis uh, 34, 25 through 31. And uh, a lot of people, like Simeon, thought he was very, very young, that he was a teenager or 14, 13 years old, it's not the case. He was uh, 20 years and six months. So, and at 20 years, of course, you know, they recognize you as part of the, <coughs> their army. You can go to war. And uh, so, and these were very, very powerful people. As leaders of each of their clans, a lot of people call them clans, we call them tribes, but uh, they, uh, those two tended to pretty much be the radicals in the mix of things. <coughs> he was also uh, at the well, but he was—he wasn't—he isn't as mentioned as much as Simeon in, in that part of it. <coughs> and uh, of course, like I said Jacob gave him the same uh, word as uh, he gave Simeon, and you find that in Genesis 49, <laughs> 5, and 6. They're mentioned together, and that—and that would happen there. But also the fact that what changed, you know, what happened, what changed to make because God doesn't change His word most of the time, and this, you know, and Jacob was recognized by God as the head. What changed was Mount Sinai, and I was just talking to some ladies out there, and at Mount Sinai in Exodus 32: 25 through 29, the golden calf comes into effect when Moshe is up on the mountain. And God showed me this, and uh, uh, just it just dawned on me studying this how powerful uh, Moses was. God gave him a lot of power to oversee all of these people. <laughs> he had to keep control of them yeah. at that time. But Moses was up on a mountain, come down, and of course he seen the people worshiping the golden calf. Of course, Aaron stepped over. And of course, God presented Aaron as his right hand man. And if you look at it, you think, what happened? To, what happened there that got uh, Aaron still to be presentable to God is the fact that they were Levites, both of them. They're out of uh, Jacobed and Amram, and uh, so they were true Levitical priests. That's why God brought him up. But we recognize the tribe of Levite as Moses stood on the mountain and said, all those who were for God step over here. And all Levi did, excuse me, all Levi did. Now the thing that we have to see about that is when they crossed during the Exodus, remember they had people with them. They had Gentiles that were with them friends, and everything else. They may not have been uh, Hebrew, but they came across with them. And when they crossed, they were recognized as part of the tribe of Levi because they come out with them. They were circumcised and everything else into that tribe. So, uh, God recognized all of them. And they would have stepped over with Levi because they were recognized with Levi and they were following. But what did, the Le what did Levi and the tribe see? They saw Moses up on the mountain, coming off the mountain with the tablets. Of course, he was standing there. They recognized the fact that he was the king of Israel. He was the one man in charge. He could go face to face with God. Aaron had not been given that honor yet. He was recognized as the right hand of Moses, who was going to be the high priest. 
recognized as a high priest. Not until his rod blossomed. Huh? Not until his rod blossomed. Right. <laughs> and he said, and uh, of course, we also need to recognize that when they did it, uh, uh, when God recognized Levite as that tribe, they replaced what God has was going to do in, in the Torah. And that's was he was going to take all the firstborn of the tribes and make them into a priesthood. So he said, instead of doing that, I'll make Levi the priest. And a lot of people think, well, it'd be, it's, it's real, it'd be an honor to be a priest. But let me tell you something, folks. <laughs> That's not necessarily the case. It's like you want to be a prophet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the Levites, and this doesn't get to temple time because we're going to be talking about the tabernacle, but... They did, of course, they didn't get a uh, inheritance into the land, uh -huh. although they got 48 cities inside of the land of Israel, and there was a purpose purpose for that. Uh -huh. That was to keep the word of God throughout uh, the land, uh -huh. other than the times, in my opinion, other than the times is when they did the pilgrimages up to the temple, yes. you know, three times a year. So you had, you couldn't leave the word go that long in the land without in the land without trouble brewing. So. Well, well, usually right took there. a few generations and it was there again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right, it would. But anyway, uh, of course, we recognize Moses as the king, Aaron as the high priest. And Miriam, of course, was the head of the women at that time because the women recognized her. And uh, they should have because they followed her with the timbrel. Mm -hmm. Remember, Miriam led them with the timbrel. Mm -hmm. So they recognized her as the head of the women. When you go into Numbers 4, uh, 1 through 20, you'll find that uh, the Levites are broken down into categories. Of course, we said Aaron, that's, that's a Kohen. Now, you've got to look at the Kohen as separate from the tribe of Levi, but yet within the tribe of Levi because they're pre Levitical <coughs> priests. Because those are the only ones that could serve in the Holy of Holies uh -huh. and the Holy Place. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the only ones. Yeah, and that's and that's where uh, the break comes. 